since I'm an idiot, <laughs> here's proof that Ty that Tyrus is Lucifer and that Lucifer is a man. Right, like it says in Tyrus. Isaiah 14, 12 through 16, you know, how art thou fallen, Lucifer, son of man, cut down to the ground of weakest the nations. But now, right here, verse 16. They that see thee shall merrily look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? So Lucifer's not Satan, by the way, guys. It says he's a man that made the earth to tremble and did shake the kingdoms. All right. Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the cities of hell. And before we get into the video, I just want to say some things. Um, I will be moving at the end of this month. Um, content should still be, you know, kicking or going. And I should be able to have internet once I get to the new place, you know, so we'll see how everything goes. Also, I do want to say we need to start preparing. You know, things are going on and we need to make sure that we have food, water, you know, and whatever that you need and to prepare our minds, right? Because there's some stuff going to come onto the earth, right? We need to prepare ourselves. We need to know the, the word of God and we need to be able to bring the truth to people right when all hell breaks loose right but anyways um also um this would i get this from a video that um fojc underground church did like uh, two weeks after i did my rise of atlantis video they also did an atlantis video a week after i did my atlantis video so they've been kind of on the same thing that i have been on um, it's they're called a uh, FOJC Underground Church. This is David Carico. Um, he's ahead of his time, right? <laughs> so I want to give them credit for a lot of the scriptures and stuff and the pictures that I brought here. Um, if you can check them out, you know, like and subscribe and all that, and show them some support, because they David Carico is where I get a lot of this stuff from. Now we veer off on a lot of things, but. The premise is still there. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start, of course, in Ezekiel 26, 15 through 21. Now, I brought this up, but we're going to bring up some also different cities as well, other than Atlantis. But this is Atlantis here. So, thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus, Shall not the isles shake at the sound of thy fall? When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made in the midst of thee, then all the princes of the sea shall come down to their thrones. These princes are those ten kings, right, of, in Greek lore, ah, sorry about that, guys, but in Greek lore, Poseidon has ten sons who ruled Atlantis, or the, the cities and stuff, right? So the, the princes are those guys, in my opinion, right? The princes of the sea shall come down to their thrones, right? Okay. And lay away their robes and put off their broidered garments. They shall clothe themselves with trembling. They shall sit upon the ground and shall tremble at every moment and astonished at thee. And they shall take up a lamentation for thee and say to thee, How art thou destroyed? that wast inhabited of seafaring men. Interesting. The renowned city, which was strong in the sea, Atlantis. She and her inhabitants, which caused their terror to be on all that haunted. Now shall the isles tremble in the day of thy fall. Yea, the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at thy departure. For thus saith the Lord God, when I shall make thee a desolate city, like the cities that are not inhabited, 
when I shall bring up the deep upon thee, and great water shall cover thee. I wonder what that is. Atlantis, right? When I shall bring thee down with them that descend into the pit. That's interesting. With the people of old time. Even more interesting. And shall set thee in the low parts of the earth. So this city is being set in the low parts of the earth. In places desolate of old. With them that go down to the pit. That thou be not inhabited. And I shall set glory in the land of the living. I will make thee a terror. And thou shalt be no more. Though be. Ready? Here's the kicker. Though thou be sought for. Hmm. We have a lot of people like that nowadays, right? I mean, they, what did they do? They brought up Egypt again. They brought up Babylon. But of course, they would never brought up Atlantis again, right? But they did try to bring up Egypt, Babylon, and all that. I'm going to show you here that Egypt is a lot older than we probably think it is. Which, there are archaeologists who do say that, by the way. Okay. Yet shalt thou never be found again, saith the Lord God. Okay. Let's talk about Atlantis there. Now let's go to Job 26.5. Dead things are formed from under the waters. But check this out. And the inhabitants thereof. Hmm. Have you guys, um, you guys probably have, you seen, you know, the mermaid movie, I'll just call it, I don't know if you can say the exact name, but, um, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The prince, the princess mermaid, right? Ariel, right? And then what, where she come from? You know, the king, or, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but the king is called Triton, right? And there's like a whole city of these mermaids and whatever else and stuff. So, very interesting. But not only that, it says dead things are formed from under the waters. So these are dead entities being revived. So, Jonah 2, 1-6. through Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God and out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about. Even to the soul, the depths closed me round about, the weeds were wrapped up about my head, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. That's interesting. The earth with her bars hmm, was about me forever, yet thou hast brought me up my life from corruption. Hmm. Wonder where he was. O oh Lord my God. And it says, right? What does it say? Right here. Out of the belly of hell I cried. Ezekiel 28 2. Son of man. This is about Tyrus again, right? Say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas. In my opinion, this is Poseidon, Lucifer. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Sounds a lot like Lucifer, doesn't it? Ezekiel 28, 8. And by the way, it says the beast comes up out of the sea. Poseidon is the god of the sea. So, very interesting. Ezekiel 28.8 They shall bring thee down to the pit, 
and that shall die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. So there you go. <laughs> they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Get, getting the theme here. Isaiah 14. So, of course, you know, I brought this stuff up before. I'll get into the new stuff here, but we're just setting up the stage here. Okay. So you ready? That shall take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. This is Lucifer, right? And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. This is Atlantis. Ezekiel 32:18, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt. Wait a minute. So now we're getting into Egypt here. Cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations unto the nether parts of the earth with them that go down to the pit. So there's Egypt now. It's very interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to show you some of these pictures here. So this is um, Bimini Road in the Bahamas. So we got stuff like this. Nice big, here's a good one. I don't know, I think it's fake. I think. <laughs> but look at all this. Here's this, right here. Here's these big, you know, um, rocks. Whatever you want to call them, bricks or something. Okay. Some interesting stuff here. Especially this one. Oh, here's a couple more. Look at that. Here's this. Okay. Now, we're going to move to um, Yonguni, Japan. Get to check out this structure. There's more of that structure. There's a diver. I think that's just a animated thing of it. Here's kind of like another better picture. Look how big that is. This structure right here does not look natural. Looks man-made. To me, anyways. Here's another better. Yeah, here we go. Check that out. Huh. So there you guys go. Here we go. There's another good picture of it. This is too smooth right here to be natural, I think. In my opinion. Oh, look at this one. That's interesting. Okay. So now we're going to Lion City, China. I don't think that's real. So here's this. Check that out. I don't know about that one. Where's a good one? So you got stuff like this. Here's another one. It's called China's Atlantis. There we go. Some very interesting stuff. All around the world, man. All around the world. There's this one.
These have some better pictures here. Check all those out, guys. I mean, Bible's real. <laughs> now this is Theo. Um, what is this? Donis Heros Heraclian, <laughs> whatever that's called. Anyways, so here's this. That photo. I think this is like uh, Egypt, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Egypt. City of Heraclean, or Heraclean, Egypt. Okay, yep. Here we go. I don't know if that one's real or not. It might be. Here's one. It's all underwater. Take a look at this one. Okay. So we're going to move on now. Now we're going to get to the doorways that God sealed them up in the sea there. This is very interesting stuff, but we'll get to there. Okay, Amos 9.2 Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence I will bring them down. Very interesting. Um, Nimrod tried to do that, right? He tried to climb up to heaven. And then we kind of dig in <laughs> with our little bases and stuff like that, right? Today, even today, right? Okay. Job thirty-eight fifteen through 17. And from the wicked, their light is withholding, and the high arms shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Ready? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? What are those doors? Job 38, 7-8 When the morning stars sing together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors, when it break forth as it had issued out of the womb. So what are these doors? The Bermuda Triangle. This is very interesting. I'm not saying they are. Just This is very interesting stuff. These vortexes around the earth, right? So I'm going to read this. This, this person makes an or something very interesting about Atlantis here. So, for decades, the, Atlantics, or the Atlantic Ocean's fabled Bermuda Triangle has captured the human imagination with unexplained disappearances of ships, planes, and people. Interesting. Some speculate that unknown and mysterious forces account for the unexplained disappearances, such as extraterrestri uh, extraterrestrials capturing humans for study. And you know what's interesting? You see a lot of UFOs coming up out of the sea. So think about that one for a second. <laughs> okay. The influence of the lost continent of Atlantis. Vortices, vortices that suck up objects into other dimensions. Other whimsical ideas. Some explanations are more grounded in science. If not evidence, these include oceanic um, flat, flatulence, methane gas erupting from ocean sediments, and disruptions in geomagnetic lines of flux. So, there you go. But look at this. So we got dark waters, the most mysterious places on the sea. First one we have the Bermuda Triangle, right? The Sargosa Sea. Or Sargasso Sea, sorry. The only sea without shores. The Sargasso, Sar, 
Gasso Sea is or is a region in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean that is surrounded by uh, the uh, surrounded by ocean currents. These currents deposit marine plants and garbage into the Sargasso Sea, causing it to be full of sargassum, a, um, a genus of dense brown invasive seaweed. Kind of interesting that we just read in Job, right? But anyways, because of the seaweed buildup and isolation created by the currents, the sea remains eerily warm and calm, despite being surrounded by freezing and choppy waters of the Atlantic Ocean. This eerie calmness contributes to the area's mystery, as several ships have been found drifting crewless through the peaceful waters. In 1840, the French merchant ship Rosilia, or Rosili sailed through the Sargosso Sea and was later discovered with its sails set but without any crew members on board. So we'll move on. So we got the Devil's Sea of Japan. We just did a thing here, right? Which one? Yes. Yanaguni, Japan. So, interesting. The Devil Sea, also known as the Pacific Bermuda Triangle, is a region of the Pacific around Mayaki Island, about 60 miles from Tokyo. The area is also known as the Dragon's Triangle because of the ancient legends about dragons that lived off the coast of Japan. <clears throat> what is it? Isaiah 34, I think it is, where it says... The dragons, you know, and anyways, on the aisles here, probably should bring that up. Okay, do, 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 do. Isaiah 34 was right. So the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. Here, let's go to the one before that. Okay, and thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And it shall be a habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow and screech out shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. It's Isis, by the way. The screech owl there. Because it's Hebrew, the, in Hebrew it's Lilith. Not Adam's first wife, or whatever. That's bull crap. But she is mentioned in the Bible. You can go look it up. Look up Screech Owl and the Strong's Concordance. You'll find it. Okay. The Michigan Triangle. The Michigan Triangle is found. Okay. Let's just read this. The disappearance of Captain George Donner from his boat cemented the Michigan Triangle status as a strange place. During a routine cold delivery, Donner gave his crew orders to wake him up when the ship drew onto port or into port. When they came to his freighter cabin three hours later, Donner had vanished despite the fact that his cabin door was locked from the inside. In 1950, the Northwest Airlines Flight 2501 dispe or disappeared as it flew over the Michigan Triangle on its way from Seattle to New York. With 58 people on board, the plane seemed to vanish into thin air. Neither the plane nor any passengers were ever found, despite the thorough search by the Michigan Shipwreck Research. So, very interesting. <laughs> Alright. Matthew eight thirty one through 32 So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast, cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And where they, ca or where they come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and perished in the waters. Now this word perished here is very interesting. Okay, this is in that video, right, that I was talking about, that FOJC Underground Church did. This is what it means right here. Which is the word, uh, Apothnesco, or whatever. Apothnesco. Apothnesco. This is what it means. 
of eternal death to be subject to eternal misery in hell. Hmm. It says here, and they perished in the waters. All right. So we're going to end on a good note here. Judgment of the kings and the mighty. Blessedness of the righteous. And thus the Lord commanded the kings of the mighty and exalted, those who dwell in the earth, and said, Open your eyes and lift up your horns if ye are able to recognize the elect one. I wonder who that is. And the Lord of Spirit seated on him, or seated him on the throne of his glory. Jesus Christ, right? And the spirit of righteousness was poured out upon him. And the word of his mouth slays all the sinners. And all the unrighteous are destroyed before his face. And there shall stand up in that day the kings and the mighty, and the exalted, and those who hold the earth. And they shall see and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory. And righteousness is judged before him. And no lying word is spoken before him. Uh, excuse me. Then shall the pain come upon them as on a woman in travail. And she has pain in the bringing forth when her child enters into the mouth of the womb. And she has pain in bringing forth. You know, the, the birth pains, right? And one portion of them shall look on the other. And they shall be terrified. And they shall be downcast of countenance. And pain shall seize them. When they shall see the Son of Man. Sitting on the throne of his glory. Jesus Christ. By the way, this is Enoch chapter 62. Okay. Okay. And the kings and the mighty, all who possess the earth, shall bless and glorify and extol him who rules all, over all. Who was hidden from the beginning. The Son of Man was hidden. And the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might, and he revealed him to the, or to the elect. And the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown, and the elect shall stand before him on that day. And all the kings and the mighty and the exalted, those who rule the earth, shall fall down before him on their faces, and worship, and set their hope upon the Son of Man. Yeah, you know, the, the book of Enoch is totally corruption, right? Totally a corrupted book, totally just a nonsensical book, right, that you hear, even though it talks about Jesus right here. I don't hold it up to Scripture, but it does agree a lot with Scripture. I'll just say that. And petition him to supplicate for mercy at his hands. Neither, or nevertheless, the Lord of Spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence and their faces shall be filled with shame and their darkness grow deeper on their faces there's that darkness and he will deliver them to the angels for punishment to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children and his elect and they sh and they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and his elect they shall rejoice over them because of the wrath of the lord of spirits resteth upon them and a sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and the elect shall be saved on that day. And they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and the unrighteous. And the Lord of Spirits will abide over them. And that Son of Man shall they, um, and with that Son of Man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever. And the righteous and the elect shall have risen from the earth. And cease to be downcast countenance, and they shall have been clothed with the garments of the glory, and these shall be the garments of life from the Lord of Spirits, and your garments shall not grow old, nor your glory pass away before the Lord of Spirits. Amen. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and end it here. Um just know, you know. Jesus loves you, man. <laughs> God loves you. And there is no other way. 
you want to survive on what's coming upon the earth, you've got to know Jesus Christ. There ain't no other way. But anyways, guys, I really thank you for listening, giving me an audience, and supporting me, even though I don't deserve it. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you. And you guys have a wonderful day.